Will the Nikon Z7 Mark III have a 67 megapixel sensor? And the Nikon Z6 Mark III have a 24 megapixel sensor? Well, according to Chinese Weibo user E8M8888, the Nikon Z7 Mark III will use a Tower Semiconductor 67 megapixel sensor. This isn't the first time that Nikon is rumored to be using the Israeli based semiconductor parts. In June the 5th, 2020, Petapixel said the Z50 and D7500 would use Tower Jazz, the former name for Tower Semiconductor. But as far as we were able to determine, all of Nikon's cameras, mirrorless, full frame, and APS C, are actually using Sony sensors, not Tower Semiconductor or Tower Jazz. So, What's going on? Well, Tower Semiconductor actually dropped hints that Nikon is using their sensors in two of their APS-C cameras, and this goes back to 2020. But we've heard very little from Tower Semiconductor recently. But before I give you my thoughts on this, let's cover what E8M8888 said about the Nikon Z6 Mark III. He said that the Nikon Z6 Mark III would have a 24 megapixel sensor designed by Sony, the IMX410 sensor. And for those of you familiar with the Sony IMX410 sensor, this might raise a few eyebrows. Not both of your eyebrows, but I'm talking from multiple people. But the point is, if this sounds too good to be true, well, we have to consider the source. Now, when it comes to E8M8888, when it comes to camera registrations, whether it's from Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, Sony, or anybody else, well, They've always been accurate. I, I've never known them to get anything wrong, and they just recently posted a couple of camera registrations for Canon. Most recently, the Canon EOS R1 with DS-12-6928, and then just a few months earlier, at the beginning of February, for DS-12-6922. And then, of course, there was ID-0179, and that was announced at the same time as the Canon EOS R5 registration, which is DS-126922. So when it comes to camera registrations, hey, we can take whatever E8M8888 says as gospel. But when it comes to anything else, such as rumored specifications for cameras, such as the Canon EOS R1, that 30 megapixel sensor, all of that talk, that was actually coming from E8M8888. Whether it's for the Nikon Z6 Mark III, the Z7 Mark III, as we're talking about here today, well, when it comes to those sorts of leaks, well, E8M8888 has been, well, doesn't have a very good track record. And if we look a little bit closer and peel off another layer, we can see that in another post, E8M8888 says, a mouthful of milk. A mouthful of milk, huh? Now, if that expression doesn't ring a bell and you're trying to run it through your hamster wheel and you're coming up with, yeah, I really don't know what that means. Does it mean anything like a grain of salt? Well, it's a Chinese expression, slang, an idiom that does loosely translate to what we know in English as taking it with a grain of salt. This is a rumor. We don't have any validation. And when it comes to the Nikon Z6 Mark III, well, we do have lots of information coming from Nikon rumors, but nothing on the Nikon Z7 Mark III. Let's first of all take a look at that date. Now, Nikon Rumors has said going back to January that the Nikon Z6 Mark III would be announced sometime between January and April. And then in late March, they revised that time frame saying April to May and even put NAB 2024 in brackets. And NAB 2024? It's going on right now in Las Vegas, the United States. Yeah. I know, you wouldn't expect Nikon to release anything about a stills hybrid camera at NAB, right? Because they don't release broadcast cameras, do they? Well, just a few days ago, Nikon completed their acquisition with RED and immediately made some really high level changes, changing out the CEO, the top spots, putting their own people in place. So I wouldn't be surprised to hear Nikon make some sort of announcement at NAB 2024 regarding their vision for the future and what they plan to do with red and all that sort of stuff but to make a full-blown announcement about the nikon z6 mark III, the nikon z7 mark III, yeah i don't see that i wouldn't expect canon to do that and if we go back to 2020 canon did tease us a little bit about the canon eos r5 mark ii but they didn't make the announcement they saved that for july so 
the dates are kind of changing, they're in flux, and that doesn't mean that the leaked specifications we have for the Nikon Z6 Mark III are incorrect. These ones right here. A 24.5 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. 6K up to 60 frames per second, Nikon RAW. 4K up to 120 frames per second, although that's cropped. But if you shoot 4K all the way up to 60, you can get full sensor readout and Apple ProRes RAW. 20 frames per second, the same as the Nikon Z8 and Z9. And 120 frames per second in JPEG, again, the same as the Z8 and Z9. One sixteen thousandths of a second shutter speed, mechanical and electronic, and of course a whole bunch of other wonderful stuff. So, shall we completely disregard what E8M8888 is saying and Nikon rumors? Because after all, they got the dates wrong, so who knows what else is wrong? Well, no, not necessarily, because when it comes to rumors, what we're getting sometimes is actually coming directly from the source, from the supply chain. We don't often know the sources because... Well, if Nikon Rumors and E8M8888 started releasing that information, well, they'd be burning their sources and that would be it for that source. However, what quite often happens is if we do get actual leaked information, things can change. Dates can change because until a company actually makes an announcement, anything can happen, including the specifications. And I recall several tech companies that released, like Apple had these big keynotes where they broadcast it worldwide talking about what would, be, what would be in their latest cell phones and computers only to release it and then say, oh yeah, that thing we talked about back in June, you'll get that in a later firmware update or a software update because, um, well, they would never tell us. So when it comes to rumors, um, it's a little bit frustrating. The Nikon Z6 Mark III, there's an awful lot of talk on the internet about this camera, so we can expect it to come out sometime soon, sometime here in 2024. At NAB. Probably not. We might get some sort of teaser. Uh, in May, that certainly makes sense. That's what we're hearing about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II from Canon Rumors, that by the end of May, at the latest, we will have an announcement. The Canon EOS R1, though, well, that one's a little bit more fluid. We don't have any specifics on dates, and I've heard some information, but I can't tell you because, well, it hasn't been validated, and I need to at least validate this information, get a few more specifics before I can tell you anything. But the point that I'm trying to deliver here is rumors are fun. Think of it as entertainment, water cooler talk. I wouldn't be making buying decisions based on them. But as we get closer to an event, we can, we can, start, we can expect this information, the chatter to start picking up. And here we are as of, well, April the 15th, no leak specifications, no validated brochures or any other information. In fact, no, well, YouTube events scheduled by Nikon themselves. So the odds of getting something by the end of April is still plausible. We could have, it, it is possible. We saw this with the Nikon Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II. Nikon just released them without any event. But if we're going to get a 67 megapixel sensor, I would expect Nikon to at least give us some sort of YouTube event that would be scheduled at least one week ahead of time, maybe even two. But one week's more than enough. And that's what we saw with the Nikon Z8. So keep your ears to the ground. I'm going to do the same and we're going to keep an eye out from what Nikon Rumors and E8M8888 says about these upcoming cameras. As far as 67 megapixels, sure, it's certainly plausible, but E8M8888 is the only source right now telling us that this is happening. We've heard nothing about specs from anybody else. It's really curious, isn't it? All this time, all this waiting, and yet we get teased with tiny morsels, and I understand your frustration, Vahagen, because, you know, I'm eager to see what this Nikon Z6 Mark III is capable of, as well as the Nikon Z7 Mark III, because with the Nikon Z8 being a mini Z9, the Z7 to exist in a Mark III has to do something very different, and to go higher in terms of megapixels, being a high-resolution camera, well, that certainly makes sense. But if you're tired of all this waiting, then consider picking up the Nikon Z8. It continues to be $300 off and has been that way for, well, the better part of a month. The Nikon Z6 Mark II is $400 off, as is the Nikon Z7 Mark II. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these deals, or maybe you're a Canon customer waiting to see what's happening with Nikon, the Canon EOS R5, still $29.99 at Adorama, b &H, and Amazon. And at Adorama, you can get a 128 gigabyte CF Express Type B card and card reader thrown in at the same time. 
But a big thanks to everybody that has used my affiliate links to purchase from Adorama, b and and Amazon.com. These links right here because it really, really does help this channel grow. A big thanks to you. I do get anywhere from two to twelve percent back, or to, I get I get anywhere from two to twelve percent as a commission, which goes right back into helping this channel. And thank you to everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing. It means an awful lot to me. But here we are, the middle of April. I would expect chatter to start picking up, certainly regarding the Canon EOS R5, maybe around the Canon EOS R1. But definitely to get start getting some information about the Nikon Z6 Mark III, because even if we have to wait till the end of May, we should start to get some information. I don't feel like we're going to get anything in April because, well, things have been too quiet. And if history of it is anything to go by, Nikon isn't very good at, well, holding back information, holding those leaks when we're about one to two weeks away. And we haven't heard anything from retailers or distributors, nothing. So I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to look to me for all the excitement. Um, who knows, Panasonic could surprise us, but at this point, uh, yeah, I feel like a big yawn coming on. Most of 2024 has been all about anticipation and hype, promises of things in Q1 that have changed. And it's not just Canon, it's Nikon and it's others but cameras are coming. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you again soon. And thank you so much for watching to the very end of this video. It's very much appreciated. Cheers now. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you again soon.